lockdown and we're going to make the most of it. Yeah. For eight years, we have been living off grid here on Golden Pond and a sauna has been something that has been on our list since the beginning. We've got a nice little patch of, of cedars on our property that we're going to go and take a few. And then with our new Logosol molder, we're going to uh, build a log cedar uh, sauna. No good. No good. This is quite a choked in spot of cedars. So we're going to just do selective logging and just pick out uh, a log here and there. Just like a lot of them, it's got uh, center rot. We'll see. Um, we'll go up uh, probably four feet because then we can just cut some hot tub boards around the edges. And hopefully beyond that, we're into better wood and we can start getting into our bigger timbers again. Forgot to mention, we were making a hot tub. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> Good morning. We are this morning collecting our logs and we're loading them up on the hand hauling comb tick. And then we're going to haul them out on the big comb tick with the snow machine back to our log pile. from Dave. This would be so much easier if my wife was helping. <laughs> Part two of series working alone with your nagging wife. <laughs> load our ramshackle comatic hitch broke but anyways so we got to go back and get that hi Hank but this is our load yet I should say look at those beautiful logs 
Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the nicest log you've ever seen. Yeah, they are. For being abandoned logs, I think we did pretty good. Yeah. Sheik. Yeah. Good. Nice one. You have a good morning. All right. <laughs> Broke where we drilled it out for the cotter pin. We are back for another day of log and hauling, and uh, we are in the cut again. And we've just come across, or we found it yesterday. We knew we wanted to come back here. Uh, a big double cedar that has fallen or got pushed over, probably. And a second one right here. Anyways, it's a Christmas miracle here. I've been saying I think the leaners usually have more rot, but uh, really it just seems like guesswork. Well, it seems like a crapshoot, but here's one with no rot. Oh. It's a big log. Big log, holy smokes. So I will have to measure up there, but I think out of the first log we're going to get four timbers. And food for the deer. And food for the deer, which will then be food for the wolves. That are howling right now. Yeah. Photo or video? <laughs> Rolling. <laughs> yeah, got a uh, big one here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Under a tight, tight little spot too, so we had to use the hand hauler to get her out. But uh, yeah, she produced a lot of lumber. <laughs> yeah, and for its size, barely any rot, really. Yeah. Okay, so we're, I've got the 661 here, and we're about to bolt this thing on the Logosol log molder for the first time. So, taking the bar off, of course, and then I'll drain the bar oil. Won't oh. be needing that. So that's not going to burn out the engine? Oh, cause no. no, no. Rookie over here, behind <laughs> the camera. Good questions, though. Chain. Oil <laughs> has nothing to do with the motor oil. So the molder comes all pre-assembled. So not a whole lot necessary to do there. I've got a spur sprocket on here and I need to change that to spline sprocket. Just knock those circlip, that little circlip off. Yeah, so a lot of saws are already gonna have this cut, this style of spline sprocket on it, in which case you won't need to order anything. The molder comes with this sprocket, so instead of driving a chain, it's going to drive a belt. And that's designed to fit on there, just like any other sprocket. So this is your typical sprocket for driving a chain. This one's obviously quite a bit different. This saw is actually going to mount up here, so this guy just drops right in. Or the pulley here should be resting on these two bearings. So, to get the belt on there, we're going to drop this whole plate, which is supported up on four nuts. We'll bring the plate down, put the belt on, and then to get proper tension on the belt, just tighten these nuts back up. Not 
touch those blades on your hand. So yeah, so that pops on there easily enough. Yo, up oh, there, there it is. Yep. We are on. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tighten up that belt a tiny bit more. Now I can put the cover back on. We can see what's going on. So, I have these blades, they're specifically designed for four inch logs. This profile here, the convex profile, is going to be for the top of the log. So we'll have two of those. And then the bottom of the log will be both. It'll have both a concave profile in the middle and then just slightly rounded at the corners. Now I haven't aligned it yet so we're gonna have to play with it a little bit to make sure our blades are centered on the log. That's the theory anyways. Next step is to put her in practice, see how she goes. I'm in it just for the shaving. Oh, because it didn't hit. Yeah, it didn't hit much. That looks nice though. Looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> We're setting up to cut the top of the log. Top of the log. Is it the bottom of the log? Mm. Yeah, the bottom. <laughs> log cabin build much? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're setting up to cut the bottom. So bring this little concave knife in here. Yes, yeah, so the profile on the bottoms will be rounded shoulders notched out in the middle. Oh yeah. I think that's pretty quick, so you can flip the log for us. So that looks right in the center. Deeper, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it's really only lightly touched this first one. I think it's all it needs. Yeah? I don't know. I guess it doesn't hurt to go deeper because then we know. Mm hmm. I was sort of expecting it to lock more. Mm -hmm. Like it just sort of looks like it's sitting there and it might topple over. <laughs> looks really good though. So I just set the scribe to the gap that I want to close. Okay. And then I've got my four points, so each of the four corners, I'll just scribe that distance.
So now that this course is laid now, I'm gonna cut the tops of the dovetails for all of them. So we're just measuring down two inches, which is gonna leave me, you know, with my joint centered in the timber here. And transfer that out to both sides there. And then I will transfer that two inches across the outside of the face. I want to add slope of a half an inch. So I'll drop that half an inch. And I can draw that line right away. And if I'm not sure if I did it right, of course I can look and look for that tapered wedge shape of the dovetail. But it's um, tapered in, in both directions, so it's got its wedge shape here to prevent this piece from pulling out, but it also needs to be wedged in this direction so that it can hold the next course of logs as well. So over here, now I'm going to come up half an inch, put a mark. Trace that line. I'll transfer the lower mark here across the front of the timber and trace that line. Boom. Yeah, so there's finished joint. So the bottom has already been cut, um, scribed to meet the log below it. And then the top one doesn't need to match anything yet. The next log will be cut to match it. But we can see obviously the wedge in that direction, but also the wedge in this direction. So let's see it fit. Well, yeah, okay. It doesn't have a matching log yet, so it's just gonna. Boom. <laughs> Came from there. Oops. Oh. That looks like a nice fit. Yeah. Anyway, so let's take a look here. So, so now I flipped it. And this is something I couldn't find a lot of info on online ahead of time as to like how this process works of changing the profile, but it's super easy. So I'm going to use the same um, set of knives here, but I'll just remove the long groove knife. So it's just a matter of loosening that bolt, move her off out of the way, tighten the bolt back up. Do the same to the other one. And you can see I've left the stopper there, so next time I'll just move it over till it hits the stop and tighten up. Again, oh, she's end, like a but... railing. Cool, so we take this in and we'll chuck her through the planer. This whole process has been taking a while, but keep reminding myself the building is done when this is done. So we've got nice planed interior surface. You know, we don't need to add any siding. The thing is sided inside and out, leaving her rough sawn on the outside and planed on the inside. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's slow going, but you're, you're doing everything. So we are clearing the site for the sauna. We've got this nice spruce here that's clear, clearly dead, but is gonna make the rafters. A few rafters, that guy will make more. Yeah, and then we've got this big guy.
reassembling our roof trusses here. But you cut all these bottle cords. Yes, I did. And you milled those rafters. Yeah, and the cords here. This was a standing tree like two weeks ago. Pretty nice. <laughs> what do you need up there? Just testing the structure. And? I wanted to see if the wall was strong enough to support me. Yeah, and? Seems good. <laughs> Considering it's solid wood all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming down. Yeah, it's coming down. Coming down. Going back up. Put a roof on or put a stove in. Scrub my <gasps> <laughs> Just bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the whole purpose of this, I guess, isn't it? Get a good scrub. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Finally get rid of that awful rash. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> We've got some of our very worst logs in play right now, but that's because they will be hidden under benches.
got the stove in and we are installing the pipe shielding. Hi Dave. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah. Pretty exciting. It is sauna roofing day and we've just finished all of the strapping and the rake trim and the eave trim and we're just finishing up the insulation and today should be the day that we get the steel on. Yeah. Hank is trying to stay cool. Right Hank? Be cool. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> but I just want to talk about um, the joints here, my joints, and actually they look almost like they've tightened up. Yeah, already. I was just gonna say. I think just, and the book says, you know, tight joints are often the result of time and pressure. And it actually looks like it was probably yeah. two weeks ago, it looks better already. So yeah. that's cool. Um, but I'm gonna show you tonight that we're gonna put some lights in the cabin or the sauna. And you're going to be able to see my gaps at my joints, which I'm fine with. We're going to chink it all anyways. Um, but you're going to see here along the length of the logs that there's no light penetration. So um, I think that just kind of goes along with the that whole idea I talked about earlier with that molder and that long groove where I was like, ah. I don't really know like why are we grooving out all this wood and then replacing it with fiberglass and what my friend told me and what I'd read was that um, it's just hard to get them perfect and if you try to just make a perfect match often there ends up being a gap anyways and it's hard to seal like those little gaps so instead we purposely gouge out or groove out a bigger gap stuff that with the compressible material and it just makes for a much more forgiving joint and that's what I've seen already when we put the light in there, you'll see um, these long joints where I've got the groove and the fiberglass, no light coming out. Um, and where I don't have the fiberglass, we can see little bits of light. We're going to fire it up right now, have a sauna tonight, and we'll capture a little bit of video. Just had an amazing sauna experience. And... Uh, I would just show you what I was talking about earlier. So this is going to display my handiwork under basically the worst possible light. <laughs> yeah, going to um, really accentuate the flaws. But um, anyways, just want to show, we'll see the light coming through at the corners and at the long joints, even though there is a bit of a gap because we put that compressible insulation, no light coming through. So we can kill the light there, Kai. Night vision camera. Oh, here we go. There. Beauty. Okay, now you can talk. So, yeah, I guess it's pretty hard to see here, but this is my corner joints. Tighter when I first built them. They just opened up a little bit when I hastily reassembled. I didn't realize the time required. But, uh, anyways, corner joints and then... Pan, I'm panning, I don't know if you can even tell I'm panning, but I'm panning up and down the whole wall and we see no light whatsoever. So here we are about 16 months past the, uh, the start of this project when we first started hauling logs. A lot has happened in that time. We've snowshoed 700 kilometers across Ontario, mm -hmm. among other things. Um, and so as a result of having lots going on, the sauna is not 100% done, but it is 100% awesome. 
Usable. 100% usable, yeah. So we've been using it regularly. And we got her fired up right now. So we're gonna go in and check her out. How do I get flash? <laughs> that looks like a home video, which it is. But it looks like an 80s home video. So. One seventy.